Hi everybody, Steve here again on Mr. Chuffy84. It's been a little while, uh, but I hope that you're all keeping well and I hope you're keeping safe. Um, as promised a little while ago, while I was uh, recording a uh, review of uh, the Pink Floyd discography, which was requested uh, to me by a friend of mine, a uh, school, school friend of mine at that, uh, she asked if I could also do uh, my review on the Queen Discography. I am a I, I am a fan of Queen. I have been since I was a teenager. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to because there's a lot of Queen albums uh, from the early 70s through to uh, through to the 90s, um, and also the album that uh, Brian and Roger made with Paul Rogers, the uh, Cosmos Rocks. Um, we're going to be looking at the 80s uh, albums onwards in part two of this review because I'm going to do this in two parts so part one this video is going to focus on Queen of nine of the 1970s so all the albums from the 1970s plus um, any other stuff like live albums and, and whatever but the main focus is going to be on the studio album so I hope that you enjoy this I'm not going to do like a um, um, uh, a best to worst or worst to best. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to do them in chronological order and just do and ju just quickly talk about them. Not spending too long on each. But let's get cracking, shall we? So the first album, first Queen album, simply called Queen, which came out in 1973. Um, Freddie and the guys, of course. Freddie Mercury, Brian May, Roger Taylor, and John Deacon. Um, as you know, as everyone knows, of course, um, the old, the, uh, the other Fab Four, um, their first album is, um, well, obviously with Queen, the Queen sound, uh, uh, as you know, would go on uh, eventually to be a big, big sound with multi-layered instrumentation, multi-layered vocal work. Uh, lots of wonderful harmony work from Freddie and and Brian and Roger. Um, there's um, on, and on the first Queen album, it's a very it's a it's a band that are finding their feet. You know, they've only been together for a short short time, but some great stuff on this album. Uh, Keep yourself alive, of course, which was um, not only their first single; it would go on to be a live favorite as uh, as as well. Liar, which was also released as a single, that's a, 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 a song that's a little too long for me. Uh, it's that six and a half minutes, Liar. I always thought that song was a bit too long, but um, still a good rocker nonetheless. Um, the writing duties are mainly down to Freddie and Brian on this album, although Roger uh, does make a contribution with his song Modern Times Rock and Roll. Um, there are a couple of songs on this album which I got to know more through watching um, some more so recent releases of Queen's live uh, concerts, and they released for the first time um, uh, their performances from 1974 and 75. This one, um, Live at the Rainbow from 1974, um, which features Son and Daughter, which is on this album. So I got to appreciate Son and Daughter a lot, lot more from seeing this uh, gig. And there's also the Live at the uh, Live at the Odeon gig, Christmas Eve of 1975 as well. And that appears on, Son and Daughter appears on there as well, as well as some of the Queen 2 stuff. So those those two concerts focus mainly on the Queen and Queen 2 stuff, as well as the Sheer Heart Attack stuff, which we'll come on to in a bit. So a good first album, not bad at all. As I say, it's an album where the band clearly finding its feet and also uh, something to note with the first album is there's an unfinished version of Seven Seas of Rye to close the album um, so as like it was like um, they put it on there as like a uh, a song a work in progress come the next album you'll hear the finalized version of it and that's what we're going to move on to now Queen 2 from 1974 so as I say the completed version of Seven Seas of, of Rye appears on here um, sounding good 
this is an album I didn't really appreciate. Yeah, you know, th these first two albums, you know, when I first heard them, I thought to myself, eh, they're okay, they're good, yeah, they're all right, but um, I didn't really appreciate them. Um, but thanks to those two more recent releases on DVD of the concerts, of the gigs at the Rainbow and at the Odeon, I really appreciate the earlier material a lot, lot more now. Um, Son and Daughter from Queen 1, Queen 2, tracks like Father to Son, White Queen, um, Ogre Battle, those are, they, they did live and they sounded awesome live. So they sound pretty good on record, but Queen obviously were always a different beast live. Um, so some good stuff again on here, more pro more proggy than sort of hard rock, but uh, um, it's still good stuff. Uh, there's some some fine stuff on this album. Those tracks in particular, absolutely fantastic. So that's Queen Two. Moving on to staying in the same year, 1974, with their third album, Sheer Heart Attack. Now um, the album itself, the album title. Uh, Roger Taylor was writing a song called Sheer Heart Attack, which was apparently meant to be for this album, but didn't finish it or or just wasn't in a good enough state to appear on the album. And of course, the, that, the song with that title that Roger wrote would later appear on News of the World, and we'll get to that. But Sheer Heart Attack itself, the album from 1974... This is where some of the uh, really classic Queen material starts to appear. You've got Killer Queen on 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 here, and that was uh, a real game changer. You know, this was pre Bohemian Rhapsody. It was a um, a sign of things to come. You know, this album and Killer Queen as a single. Uh, Brighton Rock, which opens the album, which is a tour de force, of course, for Brian May, doing his uh, guitar solos and. Um, sounding fantastic. There's a lot of songs on this album, actually. Uh, a song, the two versions of a song called In the Lap of the Gods, and one of them, um, and I think it's the first one rather than the last one, um, would become a live favourite and a big song to get the crowd joining in with. Always sounds good. Uh, now I'm Here it was also a big live favourite as, as, as well. That's on here. Stone Cold Crazy, which is, I think, is one of the only Queen songs at the time where all four members wrote together as a, as a collective. Um, John Deacon makes his writing debut on here as well with a song called Misfire. Um, they did other tracks on this album live, like Bring Back That Leroy Brown, which is um, really good. So some really good stuff on here, some really fine stuff, uh, very and much more... Uh, for me, at, at the time, it was a more fulfilling album um, and a more enjoyable album in some respects compared to the first two. Although, as I say, I do have a, a much greater respect for those first two albums. But Sheer Heart Attack was a, is a fun album. So even though the album did well and Killer Queen did well, the band simply were not making any money. They just... It just... Things just weren't working, uh, even though they had that that sort of minor success, as it, as it were. So EMI, the record company that they were with at that time, gave the band an ultimatum. Um, if they didn't come up with the goods, a really solid, strong album and a strong, solid hit single on the next album, they were done. Simple as that. They were given that ultimatum. So the band, so Queen put everything into their next album. Uh, I'm not to say that they didn't put everything into their previous albums, but they went the extra mile to do something really special for their fourth album. And what did they come up with? Well, of course, it was A Night at the Opera from 1975. This album and the next album, named after... Uh, two Marx Brothers album, uh, two Marx Brothers films, sorry, which the band members were enjoying watching at that at that time, and this is the album, of course, that features Bohemian Rhapsody and just blew everything wide open. Absolutely phenomenal stuff on this album. It is one of my favourite Queen albums, um, because it is just so well recorded so well produced and the 
the amount of stuff, the amount of work that all four guys put into this album is astounding. Absolutely astounding. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, I don't know what else I can say about Bohemian Rhapsody that hasn't already been said. It's a, a phenomenal piece of work from Freddie. Um, one of the greatest songs ever recorded. One of the biggest, greatest singles ever. What else can you say? Um, there are some... Uh, another so a song, another epic song that doesn't get anywhere near as much uh, uh, attention, I don't think, as Bohemian Rhapsody, and that's the um, that's the Prophet song by Brian May. That's a, an awesome epic track as well. Um, some wonderful stuff on there. Love of My Life, uh, which is Freddie's beautiful song, written about um, Mary Austin, his girlfriend at that time. Uh, and there's some wonderful stuff on this album. As I, said. I mean, everything on this album is super, is superb. Uh, Brian Brian May songs, Thirty Nine, Good Company, are all good. Uh, Freddie's little sort of um, uh, vaudeville kind of pastiches, um, Lazy on a Sunday Afternoon, and Seaside Rendezvous, uh, Seaside Rendezvous are just really delightful. Um, uh, tracks to listen to you've got you're my best friend the other big single from this album uh written by john deacon john deacon now i mean freddie and brian especially had been uh blossoming as songwriters over the past two three years but here is john now finally blossoming as a songwriter with you're my best friend um that's a lovely song you know and uh, a song that you you just wouldn't believe would be the follow-up to be to Bohemian Rhapsody on the singles front, but yeah, it but it was and it, and it worked. It worked brilliantly. And Roger Taylor, I'm in love with my car. What a song! Love that song as well. So again, John and Roger both blossoming at this time as songwriters. It's a it's a tremendous album. Um, what I have got, uh, if you haven't seen it, is the classic albums program on A Night at the Opera, and. Um, I've got that on DVD, well worth a watch, absolutely superb. If you love this album and haven't seen that Classic Albums programme, I recommend that to you, um, because that's got some great stuff on there. Um, and um, also, on the, the I've got the uh, Greatest Hits, uh, all behind me here, so I've got the Classic Albums, it's got the Greatest Hits, all the, the music videos that the guys did, um, which is spread across two DVD sets and a special feature on the first of the greatest hits set um, has um, Inside Bohemian Rhapsody where Brian May and another technician play all the tapes play the play the master tape of Bohemian Rhapsody and they pick apart all the individual vocal parts and instrumental parts uh, and, and instruments and it sounds it's really fascinating to listen to it when you um, take it all apart and listen to it part by part. Fascinating, especially the vo the vocals. Um, so yeah, check that check that all out uh, and, and on YouTube as well. It'll be on U on YouTube as well. Really, really fascinating stuff. But what an album! Uh, certainly a classic album. How are they going to follow that up? Well, they came with a day at the races. The second the the second album. Uh, named after Marx Brothers film. Uh, the follow-up, obviously, as I say, tonight at the opera. Um, some think that this album is just as good as Night at the Opera. Some think that it's a slight letdown uh, compared to A Night at the Opera. It's always going to be hard to, to top the, the last album, to do, to have the same success as Bohemian Rhapsody, etc., etc. That was certainly the pinnacle for them in the 80s. Sorry, in the 70s, sorry. We're coming on to the 80s next next time. Um, Day of the Races, for me, my uncle uh, loves this album, especially. He thinks that this is a better album compared to A Night at the Opera. For me, I disagree. This, I don't think, is as good. Um, what I like about Night at the Opera, I should have said, is the variety. There's rock, there's vaudeville, there's um, there's ballads, there's love songs, there's, there's everything. You know, there's a, a Japanese-inspired uh, uh, track with... Prophet song. The variety on that album is superb. 
not quite so with the day at the races. Um, it has some good live favourites on here. Tie Your Mother Down, which is a Brian May's song. Um, good Old Fashioned Lover Boy was one of the big uh, singles from this. It was an, e it was an EP, I think, actually. Um, um, that's Freddie's song, of course. Um, and Somebody to Love. So those three songs, especially the three biggest songs on this album, uh, Somebody to Love being the biggest. Um, again, another successful single. Um, some saying that it's the sister of Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't think it is. It's a very different song with more sort of gospel uh, sounding elements to it, uh, which is nice. It's, it's not my favourite Queen song, I must say. Um, some, somebody to love, but I do like it nonetheless. Um, there are some nice, other nice tracks on this album, uh, like uh, You Take My Breath Away, which is um, Freddie's song. The rest of the album is so-so for me. It's not as memorable and not as strong, has to be said. Um, not bad, always going to be difficult to follow up Night at the Opera. And I think it was a good attempt, but it, it's not quite as successful for me. So not one of my favourite Queen albums, but not bad either. Two albums to go in this section, in this first part. Firstly, we have the follow-up album to Date the Races, News of the World. And what a return to form this is. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the band uh, were, at this time, were obviously with A Night at the Opera, Day at the Races, lots of multi-layered vocals and harmonies and instrumentation, you know, absolutely crammed full with loads of stuff. And the band, for News of the World, decided on a different approach. They decided to do a completely stripped-down, bare-bone um, in uh, instrumentation and vocals. So one track of drums, one track of guitar, one track of bass, you know, you still have vocal harmonies and whatever, and that's fine. But this is a much stripped down sound to the band, and a very refreshing change it is too. News of the World. Um, I did a separate review of News of the World a few years ago, in 2017, um, which isn't on YouTube. I just did it for friends on Facebook, um, and it was to celebrate the 40th anniversary of, of the album. And... Um, this album, of course, has uh, some incredible tracks. Uh, obviously, uh, the two tracks that comprise the the most one of the most successful singles of all time, certainly the most successful double A side of all time. We will rock you, and we are the champions, uh, which also kick off the album. Uh, Sheer heart attack, as I mentioned earlier. Finally, Roger got that song finished, and it appears on this album. Uh, which is a very punk, uh, because it was 1977 this album came out, it was the start of the punk era, so it was Roger's kind of response to that sort of punk sound. Um, another big single from this album, Spread Your Wings, uh, composed by John Deacon, and uh, again, very, very nice, lovely, lovely song. Um, there are some, some, some gems on this album which weren't singles, but they are brilliant album tracks fight from the inside by roger taylor what a great song that is that's a great rocker um i think it, one of the was it um slash from guns and roses said that was one of his favorite songs uh one of his favorite queen songs um that's how good it is as a as a rocker and also uh sleeping on the sidewalk which is brian may's uh song with a which is a blues song and that is a classic example of the stripped down Queen sound. It is just one. Uh, Freddie's not on the track. It is just Brian on guitar, uh, John on bass, Roger on drums, Brian doing a lead vocal. And it's that's all it is. And it's done live. Apart from the vocal, it's recorded live in the studio. Uh, so no no overdubs, nothing. Just Just that. And it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And... That is, for me, one of my favourite tracks on this album, apart from the, the big hits. Just amazing. It's Late is another um, overlooked uh, Queen song. Um, my Melancholy Blues, which is Freddie's song, which has little 
which is which sounds very Bohemian Rhapsody in places, is a jazz. Uh, it, it's a, it's a jazzy song to round off the album. It's not my favourite of Fre- of Freddie songs. I must admit, but it's not bad. Um, but yeah, some wonderful stuff on this album. It is well worth a listen. Uh, it's becoming one of my favourites actually. Um, really good, and the artwork, of course, is phenomenal as as well. Um, and for those of you who are Family Guy fans, you may remember the episode where Stewie gets freaked out by the album cover. That's very, very, very funny. Um, but that is well worth a listen. Really recommend that one. And all I have to say, and this album has always been quite mixed, but now we come to the last album of the 1970s, uh, from 1978, and that's the Jazz Album. Uh, I'm sorry about all the... The, uh, reflections there um, now I like this album a lot I really do I um, everything on this album is really good actually um, it's an album that grows on you I think um, there's a lot of songs on on here um, very mixed reviews of the time some people liked it some people didn't um, also the band at the time were you know struggling a bit I think there was some their working relationship were slightly strained at this time as as well but um it's for me it's again like 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 night of the opera it's a nice varied uh album it's a it's a there's a lot of variety of variety on here um some good um ballads and um as well as the rockers and of course a song which is now becoming one of the one of the most popular queen songs of all uh, which you know wasn't as big as anywhere near as big as Bohemian Rhapsody uh, at that time, but and that's Don't Stop Me Now, and that's on here. Uh, it's a huge favourite on the radio. It plays, it get, gets played all the time on 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 the radio. Um, just as you know, it, just as much if if not more than other Queen songs. It, it, it's it's extraordinary that um, that song. What what a shelf life that that song has has had. It's it's just extraordinary. Um, so obviously it's a highlight of the album, but you have so many good others. You have so many other good songs on this album. Another double A side, which is from this album, "Bicycle Race" and "Fat Bottom Girls." Not the most popular of Queen songs for some fans, but they're still good fun. Uh, I like them. I still like them. And um, other live favorites like "Let Me Entertain You" uh, is on here. Um, if you can't beat them, uh, which is um, John's song, a lovely song of John's is on here. In only seven days, that's a beautiful song. It's just a short song about a love about a guy who's on holiday uh, for a week, and he meets this girl while he's on holiday, and this romance blooms in such a short period of time. But then he has to leave her because he's got to go home at the end of the week. It's and it's done in. Um, in like diary form you know on monday this happened then on tuesday this happened but it's it's beautiful it's a lovely little song it really is uh, i like roger's songs on this album as well fun it and more of that jazz which is which are great songs to listen to um and then you have some slower songs uh, dreamer's ball which was brian may's tribute to elvis presley uh because uh, elvis had uh, uh died just the year before I like this album a lot. I really do, um, and um, is well worth a listen. Um, I always enjoy this album when I listen to it. So that is the input of the seventies uh, Queen out of the albums that Queen made. The only other thing to mention, I think, for the seventies uh, is um, other live recordings. So we mentioned about the the, the, the two concerts on DVD from the seventies. Uh, live at the Rainbow of 74 and at the Odeon in 1975. Absolutely fantastic. Love those gigs. But the live album, the official live album that they put out in the 70s, the only one, was Live Killers from 1979. Um, I was just listening to this recently. Uh, I've only heard... It's, it's a double live album. I've only heard three quarters of it. I haven't heard the last part yet. Um, but uh, a good... A fairly good live recording. Um... Um, I say fairly good, it is good anyway, there we go folks I hope that you enjoyed that I'll be back next time for part 2 where we look at the albums of the 80s 
and 90s for Queen, and there's some wonderful stuff, some wonderful Queen albums. Hope, I hope you enjoyed it, folks, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.